Hi everybody, how are you guys doing? Did you have a great week last week? If you or your child is struggling with a lesson or a concept, contact, contact us either by phone or email. We want to help you through these struggles and help you have a great school year. This week, we are going to be working on lessons 25 through 28, so let's get started. This week, you're going to need the lessons manual, the student worksheets, the math card games manual and the game cards, and your child will need their AL abacus. This week, you're going to continue working with your child on multiplication math facts. Um, you should start to see your child be able to solve some multiplication math fact problems without having to look them up either on the abacus or on the envelopes or whatever, whatever manipulative you're using. If not, you're definitely gonna to wanna to play some more math card games and get some of those solidified. The activities done this week are designed to help your child get closer to their memorization of their math facts. The strategies are not necessarily to be mastered, but will help your child getting closer to get these math facts down. Okay, well, let's turn to lesson 25. The warm up section is actually the top portion of worksheet 11. They will work through the problems in the box on the top of the worksheet and they will work on those independently. Once they're done, then you can go over them and see how they did. Now, if you look at the section called multiplying with zeros, there's a great activity to help your child understand why multiplying a number with zero is always answered as zero. The next section of the lesson is called Shortcut multipl Multiplying. Um, this is a really cool way for your child to not only practice their math facts, but to show how cool math really is. Dr. Cotter has a YouTube video available on our YouTube channel. Um, I'll provide the link in the comment section of this video. Um, if you do not have time to watch it, let me give you a quick tutorial of how this works. I'm going to show you two examples for shortcut multiplying as shown in the lesson manual. The first one is 8 times 6. And so what we're going to want to do is put both 8 and 6 on the bottom two rows of the abacus. 8 and 6. Now on this side, we're going to take a look at only the blue beads. And each of the blue beads is going to total 10. So here we have a total of 4 beads. So that would total 40. On this side, we're going to do some multiplying. We're going to take two times four, which is eight. So the answer on the, for eight times six is 48. Let's try another one. Let's take a look at six times seven. Now remember on this side of the abacus, each blue bead is total, totals 10. So we have three blue beads, so that equals 30. On this side of the abacus, we're going to do some multiplication. 4 times 3 is 12. So 30 plus 12 is 42. So we know that 6 times 7 is 42. Now, after your child has worked through the shortcut multiplying activities, they're going to work on the middle section of the worksheet, the problems that has pictures of the abacus. You will finish up this lesson by playing the game Multiplication War. You have played this game previously when you've used a static card. So if we were working on one particular math fact family, you would have that static card and each player would only turn one card over and multiply that card with that static card. For this lesson, you will actually, each player will actually turn two cards all over and multiply those two cards together. When playing this game for this lesson, your child will work on completing the remainder of the worksheet. Um, if you have a comp competition in your family, you may want to make copies of this worksheet or the bottom half of this worksheet to see who can complete the worksheet first. Now take a look at the second paragraph under the section called Multiplication War Game. It says, the player says the product and the player with the greater product takes all four cards. Now, I just kind of want to stop there for a second. I know you've heard me say this before, but I always make my children say the problem and the solution out loud as they're playing the game. So if my child turns two cards over, let's say a three and a five, when they're playing multiplication war, they're going to say three times five is 15. Um, that really helped my kids in learning their math facts. 
Okay, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 26. This is our first review and games uh, lesson. And so um, when I would see one of these lessons, I would celebrate because there is no teaching in these lessons. So it's a little bit of a break. So yay, you can celebrate this lesson. Um, your child will only need to do one of the two worksheets provided, either, either 12A or 12B. The second worksheet is there so, you can so that you can provide maybe a quiz later on if you wish. Or if you find that your child struggles at some point during this worksheet, um, you can go back, review the lessons that cover that material, and then give them that second worksheet for them to do again. Once your child has completed the worksheet, go over the worksheet with them. Have them correct any errors that they made. Now don't just give them the answer and have them write down the correct answer. Have them go back and find out why they made the error. If you find that your child struggled through an entire segment of that worksheet, then you're going to want to go back to the lesson that covers that material and go over that again. Make sure they're grasping the concept. Um, by the way, in the middle of the worksheet, you will see the question that says, what pattern do you see? Um, if you'll look at the explanation section on that side, you will see that there are a variety of possible answers for that question. So just because your child writes down a different answer than what's listed does not necessarily mean they got it wrong. Um, as long as what they say makes sense, then it works. Um, after the worksheet has been completed and corrected, your child will then play the math card game, multiples memory game, which they played last week. Okay, well, let's turn to lesson 27. This lesson will give application to the multiplication math facts that they've been working on through word problems. Again, the warm up is the top portion of worksheet 13. The rest of the worksheet are the word problems that you're going to be working on during the lesson. You're going to, when you're working on word problems, you're going to want to have your child read the word problem out loud at least once, probably two or three times. Um, that way they have all of the information and they know exactly what they're doing. And it's really good practice for them, uh, a good skill for them to learn for later on. Um, take a look at the explanations next to problem one. It says, do not teach the child to look for keywords in solving the problem. Her attention then becomes focused on the words and not the logic of mathematics of the story of the problem. And sometimes they'll put a word like all together, um, which you think is adding, but it might be also multiplication. So don't have them focus on the keywords, have them focus on the understanding of the entire problem. What is it asking? Um, take a look at the logic. Now, if your child does struggle with visualizing those problems, um, one thing that I do with my kids is I use drawings or charts or the part whole circles to help my child find out what's going on. So for that first word problem, um, it's talking about um, having a restaurant with nine tables and four chairs around the table. So I will actually draw nine circles and little X's for four tables. And I'm gonna say, okay, now if we're doing this, are we going to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? What do you think is going on here? Um, helping my child logically work through that. For problem number three, um, I actually would probably use more of a chart to help my child see that on Monday they did this, Tuesday they did this, Wednesday they did this. So whatever it takes to help your child figure out what to do to solve the problem is what you're going to wanna do. Help them evaluate how to solve the problem. Now take a look at the middle of the first page of the lesson. It will have your child um, write, the, write the letter C equals number of chairs. Then we'll have C equals nine times four, and then we'll have C equals 36 chairs. This is a great way of helping your child learn to write problems appropriately so that they have logic. And this is also a pre-algebra concept that is easy and good to learn at this time. Problem one has your child um, use the abacus to solve this problem. Now, if your child already knows that nine times four is 36, don't worry about getting the abacus out. Um, definitely get it out if your child does not know that multiplication math fact. You will follow the same pattern for the remaining word problems in this lesson. Again, have your child draw pictures, use charts, use part whole circles, whatever is needed to help them break down these word problems. Now, word problem number four is a more complex problem and actually has three segments to it. Um, here, your child is going to find out how much money Zoe spent on the gifts, 
find out how much money Trey spent on the gifts, and they're going to want to find out who spent more. Now, many times kids get going on the arithmetic portion of the problem that they forget that last section. So it's always good to read through the problem one more time um, to make sure they got all of the parts calculated. When my kids do, did problems similar to this, they would easily find the cost of Zoe's gifts and the cost of Trey's gifts, but forget to find out who uh, needed um, who spent more. So by reading that uh, word problem one more time, help them go, oh yeah, I forgot, I need to do that part. The math card games for lesson 27 is the multiples memory game. Um, again, you're gonna to wanna to work on the multiple families that your child does not know. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to the last lesson for the week. Um, in this case, again, you're going to do, have your child work on um, the top portion of worksheet 14 for their work for their warm up. Um, the first activity after the warm up is going to be playing the game builds the table. Um, there is not a blog for this game, but it is really easy to do and play. Um, you will need a large space to play this game and we built um, the, this table on the floor of our schoolroom, and you probably will want to do the same thing because it does take a it does have a big footprint. Um, for those of you who wonder why this chart and most of Race Start Math does not teach multiplication all the way up to 12 times 12, there is an explanation on the first page of the lesson that will talk about that. So you might want to read that. Now, on the bottom of the first page and the top of the second page, you will use the table that you built to find the solutions to various multiplication math facts. Now, this activity not only helps your child practice their math facts, but it also helps them learn how to locate items on a grid. Make sure that you ask questions on multiplication math facts that your child does not know, and then have them say that problem and solutions after you. Um, on the top of the second page, um, you will see in the second paragraph, it says, say, find two factors that equal 54. Now, you may want to pause here and ask, now, what are factors again? Just to see if, they, if your child remembers what factors are. If they forgot, again, then have them look up that term in their math dictionary and walk through it again. That's a term that they are definitely going to need to remember. The game for this, uh, the next section has the game called Show Your Product Game, which is P15 in the Math Card Games Manual. Now this game is actually written for a larger group of students, but you can modify this game to have your child pick either one or two multiples. I would recommend multiples that they're kind of struggling with and play the game with just those multiples. Once you finish playing that game, your child will complete the rest of worksheet 14. This worksheet will help you see which multiplication math facts your child will need more practice on. Then you can add another math card game focusing on that math fact family, or you can go back and play the show your product game with that math fact family. The last question of the worksheet will have your child find the numbers that are used only once in this multiplication chart, and they are to circle those numbers. You'll want to make sure that you help your child, if they're struggling, see the patterns. Um, and you may even want to mention that the numbers that they are circling are squares. Now, if you have a child who loves the challenge, loves to uh, learn more, then you may want to go on a math field trip and study more about square numbers, numbers that are squares. Well, that is it for this week. As always, if you have any questions or concerns about a lesson, or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We are here to help. Have a fabulous week. I look forward to seeing you next week when we go over lessons 29 through 32. Have a great day, everybody.